Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and bless your name for your goodness. Thank you for what you've done already. Thank you for the answered prayers. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the celebration of the miracle of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, because of what you're going to do today. We're asking, Lord, that you impact every life and empower everyone and prepare everyone for the future in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says we do not know what to pray for and how to pray. Therefore, Lord, we pray that today you teach us what to pray for. Teach us how to pray so that our lives will become meaningful in this Christian race in Jesus' name. And those of us who have been like babies in the Christian faith for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, Lord, we pray, mature your people. Help, help us to grow up so that we'll be able to do what you have come, what you want us to do in this life in Jesus' name. The life of baby Christians, take that away from us and give us how to what you know and what you do to become manly and to become mature and to become strong in the Lord in Jesus' name. Speak to us like your children. Speak to us like soldiers of the cross. And speak to us like ministers who have appointed to do something others cannot do at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning we are considering the name of Jesus. And the message is all in his name. All in his name. Whatever it is you are thinking about, all. Everything you find. In the name of Christ. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Think about that. Whatever name we know, the names of angels, God has given Christ. A name which is above every name of every angel. And the name of great men in the world. Mighty men in the world. Powerful men in the world. Women, powerful women in the world. Lord, the Lord has given us a name that is greater than the name of any man, any woman in the world. It was any name that the children of Israel feared. It was the name of Pharaoh. It was any name that the Israelites feared at the time of Samuel and Saul. It was the name of the Philistines. Any name that the people of Israel feared at the time of Elijah, even Elijah himself. It was the name of Jezebel, even above the name of Ahab. And today, if there's any name of any man, the name of any woman, the name of any personality that you fear, the Lord is saying, He has given Christ a name above the name of every personality, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, and He has given us that name. He has given us the name that's above the name of every sickness or disease or deformity. The name of cancer, people fear that. And the name of tuberculosis, people fear that. The name of HIVs, people fear that. And God has given Christ a name that's above the name of every disease and the name of every sickness. And people fear madness, insanity. They fear demons. And the Lord has given us a name above the name of madness, insanity, and has given us a name that's above the name of every demon and the name of every legion. What a name! The name of Christ, the name we use in prayer, the name we use every day and every time. And we have confidence in the Lord that from this point on, nothing will defeat you in Jesus' name. And it says in verse 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. You see that he puts everything together. Things in heaven, even the knees of those glorified saints and holy angels will bow. And things on earth, that he is the powers that be. 
that terrorize men or women. I will not allow you to go the straight route, the direction the Lord wants you to go. He says, so giving Christ a name above all those names and that those things on earth will bow and things under the earth. Whether you know them or you don't know them, it says the Lord and giving Christ such a name that every name will bow to those things above and those things below and those things beneath. In verse 11, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That means there, whatever we need, the strength, the power, the ability, the courage, the mission, the revelation, the guidance, anything we need, we have in the name of Jesus. He tells us then in his word, what is salvation we need is in the name. There's no other name given among men whereby you can be saved except the name of Jesus. You need forgiveness is giving Christ a name. That through him, forgiveness and peace of mind rest in your soul will come to you. Is it a renewal, revival you are asking for? You want him to renew your strength. Revival, renewal, restoration, everything comes through the name of Christ. That's why it says all in his name. Are you looking for healing or deliverance? Very easy. It's the name. It's not water. It's not oil. It's not clothing. It's not any kind of magical material. It is the name of Jesus that gives us healing and gives us deliverance. And then we pray in that name. We receive in that name. We believe in that name. We live for that name. And we do all things in that name. We rejoice in that name. We worship in that name. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we pray for, everything we're asking for from the Lord. It is in the name, the name of Jesus. We're looking at First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12. First John chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 12. And you'll see here what the Lord is saying. He's telling us what we have. Everything we have. And it says it's all that we have. All things for life. All things for the present. All things for the future. All things on earth. All things in eternity. Anything that will qualify us to see him on that wonderful day. All the desires of men. All that you need to make you what you ought to be. Full as what you ought to be. He has given us a name above every name. And in that name we can ask. We're looking at First John chapter 2 verse 12. It says in verse 12, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. For his name's sake. It's because of the name. That's the name that gives us forgiveness. That's the name that gives us freedom. Freedom from sin. Breaks every yoke and breaks all the fetters because of the name. Look at verse 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. How did he do that through the name? I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I am reaching unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I am reaching unto you, young men, because ye are strong. How do you become strong? Because of the name. Your strength is in the name. There's power in that name. It says, I'm writing you because the name has made you strong. And the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. How do you overcome the wicked one? By the name, through the name, in the power, the strength, the might of the name. And that's what the Lord is telling us. He tells us in First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 13. First John chapter 5, verse 13. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. It says, I'm writing all this not because you're unbelievers. I'm saying all this not because you're unbelievers. I'm preaching all this not because you're unbelievers. You believe on the name of the Son of God already. It says, These things have I written unto you. Those of you that already believe on the name of the Son of God, look at this, that ye may know that she have eternal life that you may know what you have 
eternal life life in eternity the risen life of christ you are reproducing the life of christ here on earth eternal life and that he may believe on the name you have believed already that you may believe more didn't i tell you there's a moment you come you believe on the name for salvation didn't i tell you there's another moment you come uh, even though you believed on the name before for salvation you come now to believe the name for sanctification originally you believe the name for forgiveness because you're forgiven for his name's sake and after believing the name for forgiveness you come back again and you believe the name for holiness originally you believe the name for restoration restore to me the joy of thy salvation now you come back again and you believe the name for righteousness renewal and revival it's all in the name it says i'm writing to you because i know you believe the name already and you have eternal life i'm writing that you may believe furthermore on the name of jesus christ and have every other thing you still need to have all in the name look at verse 14 and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us he will hear you in verse 15 and if we know that he hear he hear us whatsoever 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 we ask we know that we have the petition that we desired of him and we have all that pressure because we know the name because we love the name because we believe the name because we accept the name because we embrace the name because we worship that name because we submit and surrender unto that name because we consecrate everything we've got to that name because we exalt that name above every other name on earth every other name in heaven every other name under the earth because we so exalt that name that's why whatever we ask in that name it gives unto us let's look at three things number Number one, the authority and supremacy in, of his name. The authority of that name and the supremacy of that name. The authority and the supremacy of his name. When you think of the name of Christ, I hope you're a real believer. And you mention the name of Christ more than the name of any other thing. You see what defeats us when you mention the name of cancer more than the name of Christ. You know what defeats us when well, you mention the name of a witch above the name more than the name of Christ. You know what defeats us when well, you mention the name of that person out in your village more than you mention the name of Christ. And then the more you mention their names and their names and their names and you talk about them every time, they look big and strong, stronger than Christ, greater than Christ. It almost leads to blas almost leads you to blasphemy. But when you come back and return and then you exalt Christ. You promote Christ, you lift up Christ above the name of any other person. In fact, you know, the children of Israel, they were commanded, they were not allowed to mention the name of any idol, any god. They said, you must not even mention the name. And the only name to mention is the name of God Jehovah for them. Is the Lord our God. And when the Christians realize that, and we've been given the name of Christ, and then you never mention the name of all those idols and personalities and the magical people and the, all the terrible people, you never even mention the name. And you don't read about their name. You don't read about their power. You exalt the power of Christ. You lift up the power of Christ. And then you promote Christ in your mind, in your heart, in your faith. And that's what you believe. I believe in the name and then you are not mentioning the name of this sickness and this disease and this infirmity and this personality above and beyond the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that's what gives us victory and so we're talking about the authority and the supremacy of the of his name number two the acknowledgement and sufficiency of his name you acknowledge that name you affirm that name you declare that name you project that name and then you know there's sufficiency in that name that your your victory is not in psychology your victory is not in philosophy your victory is not in the knowledge of men it's not what men say you know that your victory what you need what you have and what is going to make you walk straight in life and reproduce the life of christ on earth is the name the name of jesus and you know it is sufficient you're not looking for jesus and trying to complete 
the name of Christ and trying to complete the power that's in the name of Christ. You know that he is all in all. He is sufficient. He is all there is to be and is all I need. It's in the name. All things I need in Jesus. The acknowledgement and the sufficiency of his name. Number three is the assurance and supplication in, the, in his name. The assurance we have when we pray in that name. The assurance we have when you supplicate, when you make your prayers, when you intercede. In that name, they acknowledge the assurance and supplication. In his name, I'm coming back to number one. That's the authority and the supremacy of his name. Authority and supremacy of his name. By the way, you understand that it's from the Old Testament. We begin to learn about Jesus. In, in, a, in a Genesis, is the seed of the woman. And from that point on, Exodus tells us about him, Leviticus tells us about him, Numbers talks about him, the Bible talks about him from the beginning to the very end. I'm just going to show you a few. I'm looking at some two, I'm looking at some two, the authority and the supremacy of his name, the authority and the supremacy of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we have, that's who we have, and you're going to have the victory. I said you are going to have the victory. I'm reading from Psalm 2. I'm reading from Psalm 2. And I'm reading here from verse 6. It says, Yea, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. You know, there are people that want to take away from the authority of Christ and they say, God doesn't have any son. Of course, he said he has. How do you know who God, who God is? How do you know what God has? And who God has, except he tells you, he says in that verse 7, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And see the supremacy of that name in verse 6, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. What, uh, what authority? What supremacy? I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Uh, the Old Testament has you know, spoken so much about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that that name is above every name, greater than any other name. I'm reading uh, Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his feast? Who has bound the waters in a garment? It's talking of things that look impossible, incredible. And he's saying, who has ascended up to heaven? You cannot tell until Christ came. Who has descended from heaven? You cannot tell that anyone has done that, has gone up, has come down on his own. And who has gathered the wind in his feet? Who can do that? Impossible for men. And then he says, who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What's his name? What's the name? What's his son's name? If thou canst tell. You know what the Old Testament is saying? It says, God is mighty, he has a son. God is great, he has a son. God does the incredible, the unbelievable, the impossible. And he has a son. He says, who can do this? You know, that's only God who can do that. Who can do this? Only God can do that. And then he said, what's his name? Israelites could tell you his name is Jehovah. His name is the Lord. His name is our, his God. Then he says, what's the son's name if thou canst tell? Thank God I know that name. I said, thank God I know that name. I said, thank God I know that name. Do you know that name? It will put you over. Over every trouble, every affliction, every attack, every man, any kind of uh, insinuation and intrigues of the devil. The name will put you over. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm reading there from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9. We're looking at verse 6. One to us, a child is born. Unto us his son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. We're talking about the authority of that name and the supremacy of that name, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And then it goes on to say, and his name, and his name, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, and might the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You see that that name has everything in it. That name is sufficient and is 
supreme, his authoritative. And he said, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He'll do it in your life. I said he'll do it in your life. When you bring the government of your life, the administration of your life, the control of your life, the direction of your life, the decisions of your life. You say, I put the government of my, of my life on the shoulders of Christ. Then it says, when that government of your life is on his shoulder, and then he carries it, of course he can and he will. And that will make your life what it ought to be. I'm not going to think anything of myself anymore. I put all those thoughts on Christ. I'm not going to plan anything for myself anymore. I put all those plans on Christ. I'm not going to decide anything for myself anymore. I put all those decisions on Christ. I'm not going to administer my life anymore by myself. I put all the administration of my life, the government of my life, I put it on Christ. What a glory that is going to me for you. Because of the increase of that kingdom, there shall be no end. And there will be peace on, that is surpassing peace, on ending peace. When you put that government of your life upon his shoulder, it will establish it. It will give you justice and righteousness this it says even from now until forever and the zeal of the lord and the passion of the lord and the veracity the truthfulness of the lord will perform this your life will be different i said your life will be different you know what you'll never be the same again in jesus name and we're looking at matthew chapter one but from verse 21 matthew chapter one and i'm reading from verse 21 the authority of that name and the supremacy of that name. Matthew chapter 1, we're looking at verse 21. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, if somebody says, I come to Christ, and then he's not saved from sin. I've received Christ, and he's not saved from sin. I believe in Christ, and he's not saved from sin. He was smoking before, he's still smoking now. He was drinking before, he's still drinking now. And he says, I've come to Christ. He makes Christ cheap. He puts Christ in the mold. He rubs the face of Christ on the mold. He's saying that Christ is the same as all the other palace religionists because it's the angel said that you call his name jesus and the the uniqueness of that name and the height of that and the supremacy of that name is that anyone that surrenders to that name and gives himself herself to that name is saved saved from sin and if you have really given your life to Christ, there's a power that works in you, the power of the name of Christ. Your sins are forgiven, your sins are cleansed, and it breaks the power of cancel sin. It does that because thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. It tells us in verse 23 to verse 22. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, tell me, tell me again, Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us, is as mighty as God the Father, think of that. It's as powerful as God the Father. Think about that. It's as eternal as God the Father. Think about that. And it's authoritative as God the Father. Think about that. He has life in himself as God the Father. This is Emmanuel, God with us. And he has a finality as God Father. He tells us in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 31 to verse 35. Luke chapter 1. What do you mean from verse 31 all through to verse 35? It says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Uh, can you say here, there is uh, unity in the word of God. The angel that we read about in Matthew chapter 1 appeared to Joseph. 
you look at Peter to Mary and the same message that's why you know a message is coming from God you know this one comes it says it's a prophet and it says it's coming from God it tells you one thing another one comes it says it's a prophet coming from God tells you a different thing a contradictory thing what kind of God will that be? But you know, the angel went to went to Joseph in Matthew chapter one and told him the name will be Jesus. And then another this angel came now to a Mary in came to Mary in Luke, and it's the same name, Jesus. That's how we know when people are of God and not of God. Even the same person, the same person, can you imagine? He tells you something here today, and then another week, another month, he tells you another thing. That's how you know who people are. Because somebody goes to Joseph and tells him something, and the same person goes to Mary and tells Mary another. That's how you know who people are. But if the message of Christ is the same, is the same, is the same, that you'll call his name Jesus, and he's mighty, and he's wonderful, and will be a Lord, and will be king. Look at this in verse 32. It shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of, of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Exactly what Isaiah had said 700 years before. It goes on in verse 34. It says, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. But certified the angel and said, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and that therefore also the holy thing, that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called, tell me, tell me out loud. The Son of God. That's what the angel said. That's what the angel said. Ignorant people say that, you know, it's something different. But the angel said he'll be Jesus. And that Jesus will be the Son of God. I think if those Pharisees had listened to these angels, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus because he said, I am the Son of God. That's what the angel said. And that's who he was. And that's who he is. He is Jesus. He is the Son of God. He is my and the government shall be upon his shoulder and the government of your life will be upon his shoulder I'm looking at uh, Philippians I'm coming back to that Philippians we read before just for you to understand the connection between all those verses of scripture to see how authoritative and supreme the name of Jesus is there is nothing else to be living there's nobody else to believe in. It's only Jesus. Only Jesus. The power in that name. The authority in that name. And the goodness, the mercy, the peace, the salvation in that name. It tells us in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore God also had exalted, highly exalted him. Now, if you say you believe in God, you exalt who God has exalted. You see, I believe in God. I believe in God. Only that I don't have anything to do with Jesus. How can that be? Because it's God himself. It's the almighty God himself who has highly exalted Christ and the name of Christ. And if you say you are in agreement with God, if you say you are a child of God, you exalt who God has exalted. You'll not exalt Satan because the Father has not exalted Satan. You'll not exalt any man because the Lord has not exalted those men. You'll not exalt any woman because God has not exalted those women. You'll not exalt any sickness, any infirmity because God has not exalted infirmities he has exalted the name of Christ and it is when you come into agreement into agreement with God can two work together except they be agreed and you exalt Christ the same way that God the Father has exalted Christ that's when things begin to happen in your life and this day they will happen in your life in Jesus name it says and he has given him has given it's not given them it's not given him and the angels the same place 
the same authority you know there are some religious people they pray in the name of jesus they also pray in the name of angels and they put jesus and the angels at the same level and then they are singing their crosses will mention some angels will mention christ they mention christ they mention angel they mention the angels they mention christ in fact many of them mention angels more than they mention the name of jesus uh, that shows you then they cannot be right they are opposed to god they are contrary to god because god has given him a name above every name then he says that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow every knee shall bow and of things in heaven and of things in earth and things under the earth and that every every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father when you confess that jesus is lord that gets you saved that gets into the kingdom and that glorifies the father that honors god we're looking at ephesians chapter 1 ephesians chapter 1 i'm reading there from verse 20 ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 the authority and the supremacy of his name authority and supremacy of his name ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 which he wrought in Christ, always Christ, always Christ. What he did through him, what he did by him, what he did for him. I was going to do in your life because you believe in him. It says, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. See what God has done for Christ. He set him on, his, on the heavenly places by his own right hand. Then he goes on to say, far above all principality and power. And you, you know, there are religious people that mention principalities and powers more than Christ. They fear principalities and powers more than Christ. And they will fast, they will pray, they will roll on the ground. They will say this uh, 20 times a hundred times because they're so much afraid of the principalities and powers because they have not put Christ in the same position that the heavenly father has put Christ when you put Christ in the place of authority when you put Christ in the place of supremacy and you know that this is where Christ is above all the principalities and powers all the fears will get away in your heart in Jesus name you see there are people that fear which is more than the fear Christ more than they love Christ more than they mention the name of Christ because the witches are so big and illuminated great in the minds of those people everywhere they go they are watching for you know that one is a witch that one is a wizard and if they hear there's a witch here somewhere even if they are paid for their house rent for a whole year they'll quit they'll pack out of that house because this is what they fear but the lord is telling us that he's above he's lifted the name of jesus above all principality and all power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and he has put all things under his feet praise the lord i said praise the lord how many things has he put under the feet of christ he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all hebrews hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one i'm reading from verse three hebrews chapter one reading from verse three see what uh, see what the position christ now holds and see what it does we're looking at here from chapter one of hebrews verse three who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power he's talking about christ here and he's saying that christ upholds all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of my of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels being made so much better than the angels higher than the angels greater than the angels wiser than the angels mightier than the angels more powerful than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they he has obtained a more excellent name than they we're looking at revelation chapter one the authority of that name the supremacy of that name the greatness of that name the might in that name, the power in that name and then the assurance we have in that name that whatever whatever he commands is final 
Whatever he promises, that is final. And whatever he wants to do, that is final. There's no other power that can change or challenge the name of Christ. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 1, and I'm, I'm looking at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. That's Christ talking, that's Christ talking. He said, I was, or I lived there on earth with you, and now I'm now in heaven, and I'm still coming back again. That's the Lord. Look at verse 11, reading from verse 11 about this Christ. And John that saw him, now he saw him in his earthly ministry. And when he saw him, he leaned upon his bosom. But now things are different. Here is Christ reading from verse 11 saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What, what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the middle, in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and, and girt about with paths with a golden girdle, he said, and his ears were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if the burnt in a furnace and his voice as the voice of many waters and he that and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and as the key of hell and death. That's our Christ. I said that's our Christ. I said that's our Christ. That's our Savior. That's our Lord. And when you have somebody like that and is going before you, it says, I've conquered death, I've conquered hell. And I've conquered every enemy they are raised to conquer. And it says, I give you my name. Go in that name. You are going to succeed. You are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. The acknowledgement and sufficiency of his name. The acknowledgement and sufficiency of his name. Now you have the revelation and you have the illumination. It's clear in your mind, the enlightenment that this Jesus is above every other name, every other personality you can think about. Now with that assurance in your heart, you acknowledge it. You proclaim it. You declare it. And you call that name upon any challenge of your life, any problem in your family. You call that name upon any situation in your community. And when you call that name, you acknowledge that name. And you know the sufficiency of that name, that this is all I need. And believe that the problems are solved today. I said those problems are solved today. It said the acknowledgement and sufficiency of his name. Come back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 12 verse 21. You acknowledge that name. You trust in that name. You believe in that name. You embrace that name. You surrender to that name. That's acknowledging the name. You acknowledge the name. That that name is supreme. And that name is what God the Father has made the name to be. We're looking at Matthew chapter 12 verse 21. Matthew chapter 12 verse 21 it says it and in his name shall the gentiles trust and in his name shall the gentiles trust have you sometimes spoken to you know some people you are talking to them about christ and say why don't you come to christ say hey hold that christianity hmm. white man's religion you know some people uh, and when they say that they think they're educated they think they're enlightened and they think they're speaking from real knowledge. What is that? Christianity, white man's religion. I'm a black man. Look at this, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. We are the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. And here the word of God declares that it's not a white man's religion. It's not a Jewish religion. This is what Christ himself offers the whole world. He gave himself for the whole world. For God so loved the white man. Tell me, 
the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever in the whole wide world believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and it says it's in that name those who have been chased by all those paths of darkness in that name the gentiles who are trust the gentiles who are sick and the gentiles who are kind of oppressed by all those demonic spirits all those money powers all those night spirits all those gentiles they trust in that name and they, all those gentiles that have been in the darkness in the darkness of superstition in the darkness of idolatry they come to jesus christ and they trust in that name and they abandon all the superstition and they abandon all the idolatry and they abandon all those ideas of the gentle world that will not see the light of day it says in his name shall the gentiles trust and then he goes on to say in john chapter 1 john chapter 1 verse 12 john chapter 1 verse 12 this is coming home to you now this is for you this is for you say this is for me say this is for me john chapter 1 verse 12 it says both as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of god he gave the son of god his power to become sons of god is parting part of his nature is passing that unto you is passing some of his honor is passing that to you what an honor it is when the son of god says i want you to be like me and i'm going to pass on the authority and the power and the virtue unto you that makes you like like me because as many as received him he gave them power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name on his name on his name the people that believe on his name his nature will pass unto you his might will pass unto you his character will pass unto you his strength will pass unto you and his courage and conviction will pass unto you because as many as received him he gave them power to become the sons of god those who believe on his name acts of the apostles chapter 4 acts of the apostles chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 10 it says be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name by the name by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom he crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you whole and you are going to stand whole today in that name you stand whole you look at yourself from the top of your head to the to the bottom of your feet to the soles of your feet there's no sickness at all there and there's no stain there and there's no pain there because he makes you whole because you believe in that the name comes into your heart and affects your soul affects your mind affects your brain affects your body affects your bone affects every part of you because it is faith in that name that makes this man i'm saying this man now in front of me i said i'm saying this man in front of me and this woman in front of me that makes you whole and makes you whole today in jesus name in verse 11 this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders and which is become the hedge of the corner that's a supremacy right there neither is there salvation in any other neither is there salvation in any other you know all the people there are people that sacrifice for religion and there's no salvation there the people that sacrifice for their family religion their village religion their tribal religion and there's no salvation there and if they die in that condition they'll go to a place they'll regret forever and ever because if, they, if no matter what you you may consecrate even your child we know some religions in the world they can consecrate their child to an idol consecrate their child and they might even what do whatever to that child and there's no salvation there and then the lord is saying i'm still waiting for you because you cannot find salvation any other place it says neither is there salvation in any other but there is none other name none other name none other name under heaven under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved there's salvation in that name i said there's salvation in that name and then he goes on to say in acts of the apostle chapter 10 verse 43 acts of the apostles chapter 10 verse 43 acts chapter 10 verse 43 is what it says to him give all the prophets witness think about that there's no other person that all the prophets give witnesses to him give all the prophets witness that through his name 
whosoever believeth in him shall have, shall receive remission of sins, freedom from sin, removal of sin, forgiveness of sin. It's when we believe in that name. And as we believe that name this morning, this day, all your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6. And see the cleansing we have in that name, the forgiveness we have in that name, the salvation we have in that name, the redemption that we have in that name, the cleansing we have in that name, the victory we have in that name, the authority we have in that name, and see the liberty we have in that name, that all the things that oppressed us, all the things that bogged us down, now that we believe in the name of Jesus, see the glory, and see the victory, and see the salvation, see the redemption, and all in the name, in the name, the the name of the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary. The name of the one who shed his blood. The name of the one that the Father has highly exalted. That if you're looking for salvation, if you're looking for forgiveness, if you're looking for cleansing, look at him. Look unto Christ. All ye in the ends of the earth. And be ye saved. And be ye forgiven. And be ye redeemed. Because there's no salvation in any of that. This is he. Appointed of God. Appointed of the Father. And he'll be your Savior. He'll be your Lord. He'll be your sanctifier this morning in Jesus name look at it in first Corinthians I'm reading from chapter 6 and verse 9 know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God but be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor the effeminate nor the abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god here is where i'm going look at verse 11. and some and such was some of you but she are washed think about that but he are washed and then he says but she has sanctified see that but she are justified in the name in the name in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god what a wonder what a wonder what a great miracle of redemption a great miracle of salvation it says look at what you were and who makes the difference not religion not religion religion will never make any difference it'll just make you fanatical but you see what christ does he turns your life around and he washes you he cleanses you he saves you justifies you and sanctifies you because of that name the name of jesus that's why the lord is telling us whatever we need for life and godliness we have all in the name of jesus we're looking at um, luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 i read from verse 47 luke chapter 24 verse 47 here is what the lord is telling us in luke chapter 24 verse 47 it says in verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name in his name in his name repentance will be preached in his name in fact any other thing you preach must be in his name and remission of sin must be preached in his name freedom from sin will be preached in his name you see there are people we're not the only people preaching freedom from sin but other people preach freedom from sin on the basis of struggling do the best you can fight the devil fight yourself and put your body on the fire and put yourself punish yourself anytime you tell a lie slap your mouth and slap it hard so that your mouth will learn a lesson how to tell the lie again they also preach uh, freedom from sin on the basis of human struggle on the basis of human trial on the basis of human religion but you know remission of sin should be preached in his name for his name because of his name that will tap into the power in his name and because of the power the authority and the strength and the might of that name that's how we have victory over sin it says and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And that's why it says in um, Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. I'm reading from verse nineteen. You name the name of Christ. Here is the consequence of that. You believe in the name of Christ. Here is the consequence of that. It tells us in Second Timothy chapter two, verse nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. 
the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of who? Of Christ depart from iniquity. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The name of Christ has power to save you from iniquity. Transform your life and change your life and cleanse you from iniquity. And somebody fell into the well. And then there's a hand coming from above, stretched down to pick him up, to pick her up out of the well. And she is drawing back and drawing lower and lower deliberately back into the well. Although the hand coming from above the well is able to save him, able to save her from the well. But because she is not departing from the well, she is not having a desire to get out of the well. She is enjoying having pleasure in the well. And she is folding her hand, he is folding her hand and then sinking down into the well. He will never be saved. She will never be saved. But when you know that Christ can save and then you stretch forth your hand Lord I need your salvation and you depart from iniquity and then the Lord will do the rest that's why it says in that chapter 2 and in verse 19 the Lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone 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 every boy and every girl every man and every woman let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity look at verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself Self from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and need for the master's use, and prepared unto every good or flee also youthful laws, but follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace. And with them that call on the name of the Lord, they call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I pray that you'll do that in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen there. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17. Is there a little something significant, important here? Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 16. At the word of Christ, dwelling you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, whatsoever ye do, you love people, whatsoever you do, you care for people, whatsoever you do. Do you help people, whatsoever you do? Do you bind the wounds of people, whatsoever you do? Do you forgive people of offended? That's part of whatsoever you do. Do you comfort other people who are sorrowful? That's whatsoever you do. Do you evangelize? Do you teach? Do you instruct? Do you admonish? That's whatsoever you do. Do you pray? That's whatsoever you do. Do you intercede? That's whatever whatsoever you do. Do you serve? Do you deny yourself? That's whatsoever you do, do you speak, do you converse in your conversation, your communication whatsoever you do look at verse 17, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him is saying that whatsoever we are doing you love people, do it in the name of Jesus, do it because of Jesus don't do it because this helps me, this builds me up, this is my nature, do it because of the name of Jesus, do you care for people People. Do it because of the name of Jesus. Are you helping people? Do it because of the name of Jesus. Whatever you cannot do in the name, in the name of Jesus, that's not to be done. The only thing you do and the way you do it will show that you believe, you acknowledge, you know the sufficiency of that name. That's what the Lord is saying. Whatsoever we do, when you pray, when you intercede, when you help, when you care, when you comfort, when you speak, when you converse with people, communicate with people, everything you do, the totality of your life should to be done in the name of Jesus. I come to point number three, the assurance we have when we pray in that name. Assurance and supplication in his name. Assurance and supplication in his name. This is wonderful. I said this is wonderful. We can pray in that name and God will answer. And we can bombard heaven with a request in that name, and heaven will answer. We're looking at Matthew chapter 18, of course. What else can you expect if the name is supreme? If the name is exalted, if the name is authoritative, if the name is powerful and mighty over every challenge of life, what do we expect? When we pray in that name, something must happen, and something will happen this morning. 
We're looking at Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18. And I'm reading there from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Very less unto you. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching any sin that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Then it says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. In my name, that's the secret. We come together in his name. We bind in his name. We lose in his name. We set free in his name. We deliver in his name. We command in his name. We decree in his name. It says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Lord Jesus is there. He's there in his might. He's there in his power. He's there in his authority. He's there with his promises. He's there in his majesty. He said in his dominion and he said in his sufficiency and he says because he's here he's going to do everything he has ever promised mark chapter 16. mark chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 17 the name the name the assurance we have when we make a supplication in that name Mark chapter 16, verse 17. He that believeth and is baptized in verse 16 shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I will not be damned because I believe. I said, I will not be damned because I believe. You believe in the name of Jesus for your salvation, for sanctification, and for your readiness and preparedness for heaven. In the name. That's how we get saved. That's how we get secured. That's how we get established. That's how we get steadfast in the Lord. The name, the name of Jesus. Now it says in verse 17, And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, in my name, shall they cast out devils, they are gone. They shall speak with new tongues, they may go to amen here. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly sin, whatever the enemies may try to do, and try to put some deadly sin upon you, all those deadly things, they're neutralized in Jesus' name. And all, all is in them. That authority is in the name. That security is in the name. That power is in the name. And it says, if the enemy tries to put anything on you, it says, if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them because of the protection in the name, because of the preservation in the name, and because of the authority in the name. And I pray that this morning you will know the value of that name. You'll know the exalted majesty of that name. And when you know the exalted majesty of that name, you will not be, you know, fearful and timid anymore. You will know you are in authority and you're in position of supremacy and nothing shall conquer your life in Jesus' name. It says over there in verse, look at verse 18 now. In verse 18 it says, They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. What will happen to them? What will happen to them? Tell me out loud. And they shall, they shall recover. So then after, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And then they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. And everybody said, Amen. We're looking at we're looking at Luke chapter ten from verse seventeen. Luke chapter ten. I'm reading from verse seventeen. You tell us what happens in that name. The authority we have in that name. The power we have in that name, and the confidence we have in that name. Luke chapter ten. We're reading there from verse seventeen. Luke chapter ten, verse seventeen. The seventeen return again with joy. You go back home with joy. This celebration we're talking about, you will be a great celebrant in Jesus' name. 
The seventy return with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. We went with your name. We didn't go with the name of an apostle, the name of a prophet, the name of a magician, the name of a witch doctor, the name of a politician, the name of anybody here on earth. We went in your name. And when we went in your name, everywhere we went, it says, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Or all the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. If you go in that name, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names, your names, because you believe in the name of Christ, your names are reaching in heaven. What a special honor the Lord has given to those who believe on the name of Jesus. Their names are also reaching in heaven. John chapter Chapter 14. I'm reading from verses 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. It says that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's what gives us confidence. Look at the next verse. It says if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In verse 13, it says, Whatsoever ye ask in my name. Then in verse 14, it says, If ye ask anything in my name, that means that you can ask for salvation in the name because whatsoever ye ask in my name, I will do that. You can ask for transformation, a change of life, total transformation. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. That new life, that righteous life, the reproduction of the life of Christ. Christ, transformation whatsoever you shall ask in my name I will do it we can ask for holiness in that name holiness in the name because whatsoever you shall ask we can ask for sanctification in that name because whatsoever you shall ask in my name we can ask for power the power of the Holy Ghost in that name the baptism the indwelling the infilling the enveloping of the Holy Ghost power in our lives because whatsoever you shall ask in my name it says that I will do victory over temptation we can ask for that in his name victory over all the trials the courage and the strength to stand in persecution and the courage and the conviction to stand in the challenges of life i need courage i need courage i need conviction and we can ask for that courage in the name of the lord because it says whatsoever you shall ask in my name we can ask for healing in that name any pain there any affliction there any pressure there, any oppression there we can ask for that healing or deliverance in the name it's not limited to just one thing one thing two things it says whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do and we can ask for strength you know sometimes you are tired and you are weak you don't know how to then brace up yourself and move on because of all the things facing you and when you need strength they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings as eagles and you can come this morning and say Lord all I'm asking for is strength we can ask for guidance in that name you are at a crossroads in life and then you say where do I go is it here or there, don't stay there confused. You can ask for guidance in that name. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, you can ask for wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him come unto God. He gives him abundantly without rebuking or breeding him. We can ask for wisdom. Whatsoever you shall ask, you are in a particular dangerous situation in your community, in your country. And he says you can ask for protection in that name or preservation in that name. We can ask for grace to endure to the end because whosoever shall endure to the end the same shall be saved and you can come to and say Lord if you need healing ask if you need deliverance ask if you need wisdom ask if you need guidance ask if you need power of the Holy Ghost you ask if you need protection ask if you need preservation ask if you need strength for the day you ask if you need grace to move on without a cowering without drawing back you can ask the Lord because it says whatsoever 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 he shall ask in my name that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he ask anything, if he ask anything, if he ask anything in my name, I will do it. I'm sure this morning God will answer your prayer. I say God will answer your prayer. 
Don't make your prayer small. Don't make your prayer limited. Don't make your prayer confined. Make it big. Make it large. Make it enlarged. And say, Lord, this is what I'm asking. And I come on the basis of what you have said. Whatsoever you are asking my name, I will do it. Anything, anything. Rise up and ask the Lord. Rise up and ask the Lord. He has given you that blank check, that open check. And he has said, whatsoever. Don't you need wisdom whatsoever? Don't you need guidance whatsoever? Don't you need courage whatsoever? Don't you need strength whatsoever? Don't you need healing whatsoever? Don't you need deliverance whatsoever? Don't you need sanctification whatsoever? Don't you need holiness whatsoever? Don't you need the revival in your soul whatsoever? Don't you need the power of the Holy Ghost whatsoever? Don't you need the gifts of the Spirit whatsoever? Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. That I will do. That I will do. That name of Jesus is exalted. That name of Jesus is honored. That name of Jesus is exalted above every other name. And you can come to the Lord and ask. You can come to the Lord and ask. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And we're asking with confidence. We're not asking the name of an angel. In the name of a preacher. In the name of a religious founder. We're asking in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the name he has given to us. You need wisdom, you need guidance, you need protection, you need preservation, you need some authority, you need some strength, you need some power, you need some stability, you need some courage, and you need the stamina to stand in temptation. Whatsoever, 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 healing, whatsoever, freedom, to be set free from captivity, whatsoever, whatsoever we ask in that name. Courage, inner courage, inner strength, whatsoever we ask in that name, that's what you will do. Wisdom to take decision. Wisdom to move on. Wisdom to face the challenges of life. And the courage and the strength and the power whatsoever. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Is all and in all. His name covers every area of your life. Your personal life. Your family life. Your Christian life. Your ministerial life. Your professional life. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. He shall ask in my name. That I will do. Problem in your marriage? Problem in your family? Problem in your profession? Whatsoever. 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 Strength, stamina, courage and conviction. Whatsoever. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. There's no reason to be weak anymore. There's no reason to be fearful anymore. There's no reason to be frightened anymore. There's no reason to feel empty anymore. The fullness of the Godhead resides in Christ. And His promises are yes and amen. And He said, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do you. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything, if he shall ask anything, 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 anything in my name, I will do it. Healing is good. After healing, what else are you asking for? Deliverance is wonderful. After deliverance, what are you asking for? Salvation is great. Wonderful. After salvation, what else? Holiness there. Sanctification there. 
Holiness is great and wonderful. After holiness, what else? The baptism in the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost in your life. With the supernatural signs following. Whatsoever, 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 whatsoever. He shall ask in that name. That's the name above every name. Name above every name. And you can ask. The Heavenly Father has committed Himself to giving you the answer that whatsoever you ask in the name, that He will do. That He will do. That He will do. There's strength in that name. There's power in that name. There's authority in that name. There's grace in that name. There's trying to stand in that name. There's salvation in the name. Forgiveness in that name. Revival in that name. Restoration in that name. Holiness in that name. The power of the kingdom in that name. The power of the Holy Ghost is in that name. In dwelling of the Spirit, the fire of the Holy Ghost coming within you, fires you up, revives you. It's all in that name. Protection. 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 From all the powers of the enemy. It's in that name. Ask in the name. Ask in the name. Ask in the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In that name, every knee shall bow. In that name, in that name, all enemies are conquered. In that name, the backbone of Satan is broken. In that name, madness will leave you. Insanity will leave you. Cancer will leave your body. HIV AIDS will leave your body. In that name, fear will leave your heart. Trembling will leave your soul. In that name, courage will come in. In that name, power and authority will come in. It's all in the name. It's all in the name. It's all in the name. In the name of Jesus. Ask him. Ask the Father in the name. Ask the Father in the name. Whatsoever. 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 Whatsoever he shall ask. The Father in the name. He's giving us that name. The name is Jesus. The name is Emmanuel. The name is the Son of God. In the power of God in man. Ask him. Ask believing. Ask with assurance. Ask standing on the promises. The promises we cannot fail. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. He's doing it right now. He cannot fail. That name cannot fail. That name will never fail. Put the government of your life upon his shoulder. 
puts the government of your life, the control of your life, the direction of your life, the administration of your life, the plan of your life, puts it on his shoulder. Then you'll be sure of victory, of success, of accomplishment, of power, of ability, ability to pull through, ability to overcome. Ask believing everything is in the name. Everything is in the name. Everything is in the name. At the moment you ask in that name, it's done, it's done, it's done. You are not going to take a no for an answer. You are not going to take a no for an answer. You are not going to take a no for an answer. You are not going to take a no for an answer. You have the assurance. You have the assurance. You have the assurance that whatsoever you ask in that name, that anything you ask in that name, that's done. You have the assurance. Heaven affirms it. Heaven confirms it. God affirms it. God confirms it that everything you ask, that everything you ask in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, that's done. Anytime, every time, anywhere, everywhere, by anyone, everyone. Ask until your cup is full. Ask until your cup is running over. Running over. Running over. My cup is filled and running over. Running over. Running over. My heart is filled and running over. And have the assurance, have the assurance, have the assurance, the certainty that is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Anything we ask for in Jesus' name is done already. 
everything you have asked for in the name of Jesus is done already. What else do you do? I said, what else do you do? I said, what else do you do? What else do you do? You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered. You are strengthened. You are promoted. You are lifted up. You are energized. You are unconquerable. The spirit of the conqueror is now inside you. You'll tread on serpents. You'll tread on scorpions. The devil is no more on your head. The devil is no more at your back. The devil is under your feet. I said the devil is under your feet. I said the devil is under your feet. If the devil is under your feet, what do you do with your feet? I said if the devil is under your feet, what do you do with your feet? Match up. Match up. Match up. You are victorious in Jesus' name. And the ears of the devil are in between my hands. The ears of the devil are in between my hands. All those demons, I conquer them. All those demons, you conquer them. All those evil spirits, you conquer them. There are no more in your chest. There are no more in your heart. There are no more in your lungs. There are no more in your kidney. There are no more in your brain. There are no more in your bone. You are free. You are free. You are free. Where is a free man? Where is a free woman? Praise the Lord, you are free. Heaven declares your freedom. God declares your freedom. Nothing will bind you anymore. All those challenges, your family, they are gone. All the tears, they are wiped away. Your joy, nobody will ever take from you. This retreat, the celebration in this retreat is inside your heart. Keep those victorious hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for guidance, for wisdom, for love, for grace, for mercy, for everything. Receive our presence in Jesus' name. I declare every brother here, every sister here, every boy, every girl, I declare everyone victorious in Jesus' name. All the volume of prayer that ascended to the throne of God, prayed in the name of Jesus this morning, every sin without exception is answered in Jesus' name. Victory in your soul. Victory in your spirit. Healing in your body. Deliverance in your home. Prosperity in your business. And the joy of the Lord will multiply your life in Jesus' name. You will never lack. You will never fall. The strength of the Lord will go through up with you in Jesus' name. All your prayers are answered. Oh Lord, I pray you confirm it for everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wonderful, 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 wonderful.